Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Pearson at Excel International Level, Chemistry Unit 5 for June 2020. This is the part 1 video. I put the link to the part 2 and part 3 videos below in the description box. Let us begin with the first part. Question 1. The enthalpy change of hydrogenation of cyclohexene is negative 120 kilojoules per mole. We can see this is cyclohexene reacting with hydrogen to give us cyclohexane. They say, what is the approximate enthalpy change of hydrogenation of benzene in kilojoules per mole? The enthalpy change of hydrogenation of benzene should be less than the enthalpy change of hydrogenation for the Kekul structure, which should be 3 times negative 120. So for the Kekul structure, it should be negative 360 kilojoules per mole. And when we look here, we can see this is greater than the Kekul enthalpy change of hydrogenation. This is exactly similar to the Kekul enthalpy change of hydrogenation, so it leaves us with these two. However, if hydrogenation of cyclohexene is negative 120 kilojoules per mole, the one for benzene cannot be this because this is well lower. And therefore, the only answer we are left with is this, which is negative 210 kilojoules per mole. The actual value should be negative 208 kilojoules per mole. So this is the answer that is approximately close to this. Question 2. Which orbitals overlap to form the ring of delocalized electrons in benzene in what type of bond is formed. So orbitals that overlap are p orbitals. There is a sideways overlap as you can see demonstrated here. p orbitals will overlap and the product is going to be formation of pi bonds. So the answer should be a corresponding to what we can see observed here. Moving on. Which reagent and catalyst will convert benzene into phenyl ethanol? Phenyl ethanol is a ketone. So if we're carrying out a reaction to convert this to this structure, this has been introduced, and that should only have come from a reaction between benzene and an acyl chloride, which is ethanol chloride, through an acylation reaction. So the answer should be, here we use ethanol chloride, and the possible catalyst should be aluminum chloride and not platinum. So the answer here should be a C. Question 4. Chlorine reacts with methyl benzene in the presence of ultraviolet light. This is UV light, and since we have chlorine reacting, it should be a free radical substitution reaction. So they say, which of these is a product of this reaction? Methylbenzene has a structure like this. If there is presence of chlorine free radicals, one of the radicals produced is going to displace one hydrogen from the methyl group. So one hydrogen gets out here, and the chlorine radical comes in, producing a structure like this. So the answer here should be an A. This is a free radical substitution reaction. Moving on. Question 5. How many isomers containing a benzene ring are there with a molecular formula carbon 6, hydrogen 3, and O2, 2, OH? Now, based on the carbon hydrogen ratio, we can see that this has more carbons than hydrogen, so this should be a benzene ring. So the structure should have a benzene ring that has an OH attached to it, and there are two nitros attached to the ring as well. So here I drew the possible structures. We have a phenol with nitros on carbon 2 and carbon 3, another phenol with nitros on carbon 2 and carbon 4, another phenol with nitros on carbon 2 and carbon 5, another phenol with nitros on carbon 3 and 5, another phenol with nitros on carbon 3 and 4, and a phenol with nitros on carbon 2 and carbon 6. So these are six possible structures that could be formed, and therefore my possible answer was 6. Question 6. Phenol reacts with ethanol chloride to form phenyl ethanoate. In this reaction, an ester has been produced. So they say in an experiment, 3.67 grams of phenyl ethanoate was formed, giving a yield of 85.0%. What was the starting mass of phenol? So here we can see the percentage given. We know percentage yield should equal to actual yield divided by theoretical yield times 100. The mass produced is going to be the actual yield. So actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100 should give us the percentage yield. And making the theoretical yield the subject, I got it should be 3.67 divided by 85 times 100, which is 4.3176 grams. This is the mass of phenyl ethanoate. Down here, I calculated the number of moles of phenyl ethanoate, which should be mass divided by molar mass. The mass got here divided by the molar mass. The molar mass was given to us as that. I get the number of moles as 0 0.0317 mole. Looking at the reaction equation, we can see one mole of this was produced from one mole of that. So it means the number of moles of phenyl ethanoate will equal to the number of moles of phenol. 
Therefore, mass of phenol should be the number of moles of phenol times the molar mass of phenol, and I got 2.98 grams. So the answer that corresponds to that should be a C. Moving on. Question 7. A hydrocarbon contains 91.3% by mass of carbon. Which of these could be the molecular formula of this compound? So if this hydrocarbon has 91.3% carbon, it means 100 minus 91.3 will give us the percentage by mass of hydrogen. So here, if this is 91.3, the one for hydrogen is 8.7%. 91.3 divided by 12 gives us that. So these are the number of moles of carbon. And the number of moles of hydrogen should be 8.7 divided by 1, which gives us that. Dividing this by that and that by that gives us a ratio of 1 to 1.14. And when we look here, there is nothing that corresponds to that. So we had to multiply through suitably in order to see if there is any connection using any of this. So when I multiply through by 7, I realize 1 times 7 gives me 7 and 1.14 times 7 gives me 8.004. Therefore, the possible structure should be carbon 7, hydrogen 8, and so B is my answer. Moving on. Question 8. What is an organic product of the reaction between ethyl amine and chloroethane? Ethyl amine is like that and chloroethane is like that. This is going to be a nucleophilic substitution reaction in which the lone pair of electrons on nitrogen will come to the partially positive carbon and this bond is going to break away. So creating a structure that is going to look like this. Normally, we would say this reaction produces a product like this. However, there is still a lone pair here. So this hydrogen will remain attached here, creating a positive charge on that. And the negative chloride is going to be attracted here, meaning our final product is going to be this. So the possible answer here should be a D. Question 9. Which pair of monomers can form this polymer? So we have this polymer that looks like it's an ester. We can see that this should have been a diol, and therefore this could be a dicarboxylic acid. So looking around here, we can see this is a dicarboxylic acid, and here the diol is not that, so that is out. This is a diol, which is not this, so that is out. This is not the structure we have there. We can see this is what we have there, and this is the corresponding dicarboxylic acid. So we can see our possible answer should be a D. Question 10. Part of the structure of a protein is shown. We can see this is a whole structure of a protein, and there are multiple amino acids. They say how many different amino acids are used to form this part of the structure. We have to be able to segment the structure into different amino acids, and I segment it here. Wherever there is a carbon oxygen double bond and a nitrogen on the other side, that's one amino acid. That is the next, the next ends here, the next here, and the next here. So we can see we have one, two, three four, five, six amino acids. However, we have to know how many are different. We can see that this is the same as that. This is unique. That is the same as that. And this is unique. So in total, we have four different amino acids. And therefore, my answer should be a B. Moving on to question 11. Question 11 says, which organic compound reacts with a Grignard's reagent to give a product that forms a secondary alcohol on hydrolysis? Grignard's reagent reacts with carbon dioxide to produce a carboxylic acid. It reacts with methanol to produce a primary alcohol. Then it reacts with all other aldehydes to produce secondary alcohols. And when it reacts with ketones, they produce tertiary alcohols. And here, ethanol is a suitable compound, so the answer should be a B. Moving on. Question 12. A compound with a formula carbon 6 hydrogen 14 gives a carbon 13 NMR spectrum with four peaks. Which compound gives this spectrum? We know if there are four peaks, it means we have four different carbon environments. Using the possible answers I was given, I placed carbons where they should be. So here we can see this environment and that are the same. This is the same as that, and these two are the same. So we have three different environments, so that is not our answer. When we come to this, I have one, two, three. We can see four, and these two are similar. So we have five peaks and there are four. This is not the answer we're looking for. When we come to this, I can see that environment, that, that, and that are the same, while this and that are also the same. So we have two different environments and therefore we will have two peaks. Coming to this structure, we can see there is symmetry. So this and that are the same, that and that are the same. This is different and that is different. 
Therefore, we can say that we have four different carbon-13 environments, and therefore, this is the possible answer. Question 13. Cuminone is used as a flavoring. So this is the structure of cuminone. They ask, what is the molecular formula of cuminone? This is the structure of cuminone. I began by placing the carbons where they should be. And then in place of hydrogens, I just place the bonds. So we can see we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 carbons. Then the hydrogens will be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 1 oxygen. So the possible answer should be a C. Carbon 11, hydrogen 14, and oxygen 1. Question 14. Which species contains an element with the oxidation number as bromine in potassium bromate 5? When we look at the given compounds here, in all these compounds, the oxidation state of oxygen is going to be a minus 2 because none of these compounds is a peroxide, none of them is elemental oxygen, and in none of these compounds is oxygen bonded to fluorine. So we can say in all of these, the oxidation state of oxygen is going to be minus 2. So in here, nitrogen is plus 5 while oxygen is minus 2, potassium is plus 1, manganese is plus 7, and oxygen is minus 2. Here, potassium is plus 1, iron is plus 6, oxygen is minus 2, sodium is plus 1, sulfur is plus 4, and oxygen is minus 2. Since bromine has oxidation state plus 5 in potassium bromate, we can conclude that the atom that has the same oxidation state is nitrogen in this first compound, so the answer should be an A. Moving on, question 15, which is a redox reaction? Remember, a redox reaction is a reaction where there is oxidation as well as reduction. In this compound, chromium is plus 6 oxidation state, while here it is a plus 3 oxidation state, so we can say a reduction reaction took place. On this side, carbon is 0 oxidation state and it's converted to plus 4 oxidation state, so we can see there is oxidation. So this here is a redox reaction. If we look at all the other reactions, B, C, D, we can see in all of them, chromium is plus 6 oxidation state, and therefore, there will not be any reduction. We can conclude that our possible answer should be A for question 15. Question 16. The electronic configuration of the atoms of an element is as we can see here. They say what is the maximum oxidation number shown in compounds of this element. When we add up all the electrons in here, we can see there is a total of 24 electrons. And if you look in the periodic table, the element that has 24 electrons is chromium. We know that chromium has the maximum oxidation state of plus 6, so the answer should be a C. Question 17. Which of the following species will not act as a ligand in the formation of a complex ion? To act as a ligand, we need a lone pair of electrons. So here we can see there is a lone pair here, so this can be a possible ligand. This can be a possible ligand as well because there is a lone pair. There is a lone pair of nitrogen here. But when we look at ammonium, there is no lone pair because we can see in ammonium, the lone pair is used to form a dative covalent bond with the incoming positively charged hydrogen. And therefore, this does not have a lone pair of electrons, so it cannot form a dative covalent bond, and therefore it cannot act as a ligand. So our possible answer should be a D. Question 18. What is the coordination number of nickel ion and the overall charge M of this complex? In this complex, the ligand used is that, and it has a total charge of negative 2. So if this is minus 2, and that is minus 2, that is minus 4, plus each of these, that is minus 1, so the total is minus 6. However, the positive ion has a 2 plus. So 2 plus plus minus 6 gives us negative 4. So M should be negative 4. So when they say coordination number of nickel, Nico has coordination number 6 because there are 6 dative covalent bonds around it. However, the overall charge is going to be minus 4, so the possible answer should be a D. Question 19. In acidic conditions, magnet 7 ions are reduced to magnesium 2 ions. And in neutral conditions, magnet 7 ions are reduced to magnesium 4 ions or magnesium 4 oxide. 22 cm cubed of a solution of magnet 7 ions were added to oxidize 25 cm cubed of a solution of ion 2 ions to ion 3 ions in acidic conditions. The same solution of magnet 7 ions is used to oxidize 25 cm cubed of the same solution of ion 2 ions in neutral conditions. 
They say by considering the oxidation number changes involved, it may be shown that the volume of magnet 7 solution required in neutral conditions is. So I began by writing in acidic conditions. This will be the half equation, manganate 7 converted into manganese 2. And on the other side, iron T is going to be oxidized to iron 3. To write the redox equation, I had to multiply this equation by 5 in order to balance the electrons. And that gave me this as the final equation. When we look at this equation, we can see the ratio should be 1 to 5. So ratio is 1 to 5, and the volume should be 22 to 25, whereby 22 is manganate and 25 is for iron 2 plus. When we go to the other second reaction, we see again manganate 7 being converted to manganese 4, and iron 2 is converted to iron 3. We can see here the ratio is 1 to 3, as we can see here. And then we do not know the volume of manganate required. However, we know it's going to oxidize the same volume of iron 2 plus since in both reactions we have 25 centimeters cubed of iron 2 and the ratio here was 1 to 5 when the ratio is 1 to 3 it means the volume here should be higher than the volume here so that means to find the volume used up here it should be 5 divided by 3 times 22 which gives us 36.7 centimeters cubed so my answer here was a c question 20 a solution contains 19.6 gram per decimeter cubed of chromium 3 sulfate, which is that. They say what is the concentration in mole per decimeter cubed of sulfate ions in this solution? We are looking for the concentration of sulfate ions in this solution, and we know one mole of chromium 3 sulfate contains three moles of sulfate. So our aim is to find the concentration of chromium sulfate and then multiply that by three to find the concentration of sulfate. So since we are given the concentration of chromium 3 sulfate in gram per decimeter cubed, we can convert this to mole per decimeter cubed by dividing by the molar mass. So concentration should be 19.6 divided by the molar mass, which is 392. And here we get 0.05. To get the concentration of sulfate, like we said already, multiply that by 3. And the answer is 0.15 mole per decimeter cubed, getting the answer as that. So the answer should be a C. So this brings us to the end of the first part of this paper. Thank you for being with us. Do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.